these very steps, um, Prime Minister Lee Kuan Yew read out the proclamation of Singapore joining Malaysia. We see a different Singapore. We see a Singapore that they saw its future as part of Malaysia. We see Singapore as, um, as a state uh, that had just gotten independence from the British. Then it's lights on, and the dramatic scene springs to life in new colour and sparkle. Representatives from all walks of life to mark this prelude to Malaysia when 10 million people will join in unity under one flag. And um, the kinds of the celebratory tones attached to the, the document as well as the surrounding archival records that we have that highlight that particular moment in history. The proclamation of Malaysia uses um, religious overtones uh, reflecting um, the, the importance of Islam as the state religion for, the, for Malaya. Um, on the other hand, the, the proclamation of Singapore joining Malaysia uses very secular language. This proclamation basically proclaims Singapore's uh, merger with Malaysia, joining as a sovereign and independent state of Malaysia forever. Yeah. Soon after the Federation was formed, we had different styles, different policies. So after the, the riots in 1964, there was discussions between the, the leaders from, from, from both sides about separation. The select group of ministers on both sides, they, they, they went on to KL, they drafted out the agreement. It was drafted by E.W. Barker. Um, what happened after the drafting of the uh, separation agreement was the remaining Singapore ministers were invited down to KL to sign off on the, the document because their signatures were required. A number of them found out they were shocked. Uh, in particular, uh, the Deputy Prime Minister, Dr. To Chin Chai, and the, the Minister for Culture, S. Rajaratnam. They had uh, family in Malaysia. They both grew up in Malaysia. They had very close emotional ties to the country. Um, and they were very uh, reluctant to sign off the separation in fact, they didn't want to sign. I understand from the Prime Minister that he had a devil of a time convincing them to sign. Because some of our, the members of our cabinet were Malaysians. Lee Kuan Yew tells the Tengku that it's just not possible and eventually persuades the Tengku to at least write a note uh, to his colleagues, to Dr. To and in particular. In fact, as Roger Ruanam, he does mention that um, reading this note, this was the, 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 the reason why he and Dr. To decided that, that they had no choice but to put their signatures down on the, the, the agreement to separate. That letter that we become responsible for any bloodshed man says, look, I cannot control the situation. It's a tantamount to be saying, oh, please do what you like. I mean, let the dogs loose and we are in no position to protect anybody, you know, so therefore uh, we have to concede. The agreement that I drafted was in fact a longer agreement, but the Prime Minister wanted to keep it as short as possible, lest the, the Malaysians would be afraid of signing it. Now I, Lee Kuan Yew, do hereby proclaim and declare, Singapore shall forever be a sovereign, democratic, independent nation, founded upon the principles of liberty and justice, and ever seeking the welfare and happiness of a people in a more just and equal society. In the immediate aftermath of the Singapore gain separation, we had, uh, we had experienced severe racial tensions during our short two years with Malaysia. And so one of the key things that the post-independent government was thinking about was how to ensure that history does not repeat itself. Um, so one year after our independence, um, they decided to convene a constitutional commission to look into how we can safeguard multiracialism um, in our constitution. And by Chief Justice Wee Chong Jin, who was then the first Asian to be appointed to this position, he looked into how we can uh, create certain um, agencies and uh, bodies in order to ensure that any legislation that is uh, passed will not, will not uh, infringe upon the rights of minorities. Now, on display here is also uh, interesting because it's a copy that is uh, personally signed by Wee Chong Jin himself. So this is the presentation copy that was given to the Istana and uh, you can see his, his signature on display in, in the exhibition.
And this is the item that rounds off the Law of the Land exhibition.